All right. So um, this is the activity that we um, need to cover is uh, self-constructed assets. This is a much more condensed um, this semester than in prior semesters coverage of self-constructed assets. Um, so if you talk to people who've taken this class before, maybe they told you this was a big topic and it is an important topic, but it's not nearly as all encompassing as it would have felt um, in semesters in the past, but it's still important. There are, um, there's three steps to calculating capitalized interest. Um, there is a video, right, that was in this lesson on the page before was a link to or a description of that um, video that is a big overview of the process. And um, so now we're just applying it. This is applying that um, tutorial into this problem. So let's go ahead and look at it. So we um, have a project that has three payment dates. There's a construction loan amount with an interest rate, and then there's other debt amount in the interest rates. So in order to do these kind of problems, right, we always have to know when the payments came in precisely during the year and what those interest rates were. So the whole idea with capitalized interest is that you're carving out some of the interest you actually owe for that period. You're carving it out, meaning instead of expense, interest expense, you're going to get to call it part of an asset, which is going to make your income higher because your expenses aren't as big. It's going to make your assets a little bit bigger. And the, specifically, it's going to this self-constructed asset, whatever that project is called in your general ledger. So we're going to go through the steps necessary to calculate that amount of capitalized interest. And um, to get us started, though, we're going to first look at what is the total amount of interest that Alma's going to incur in 2022. So that's kind of our starting point, just to get our heads wrapped around. If, um, if we didn't do the capitalizing interest, here's what our total interest cost is going to be regardless. Okay, so I've got this one here already figured out. I'm just going to kind of show you. If I had a loan for two and a half million with a 5% interest rate, that would be 125,000, right? Two and a half million times 5% gives me that interest amount for the year. And I said there was other debt that had 4 million in principal and 3% interest rate, and that's 120,000, 4 million times 3%. If I add those two together, I would have total interest of 245,000, right? So with Almo, if Almo was not able to, um, capitalize interest, total interest expense would be 245,000 because that is the total amount of interest that's incurred. That just basically means all the debt, this is the interest that goes with all the debt. So, so this is clearly the amount of cash interest that will be paid is 245,000. What we're focusing on here in this activity is of that 245,000, there's a piece of it that we don't need to put in interest expense. We can take it out of interest expense and put it on the balance sheet as part of uh, that initial value of, an, of a new asset, a self-constructed asset to be specific. All right, so this next piece says, you know, GAP says that Amo can capitalize interest if construction is happening and if there's actual interest and we just established that was true. And then what we need to figure out though is this average accumulated expenditure amount then Almo can use to compute capitalized interest. So this is kind of the first step in calculating capitalized interest. We have to think about on an annualized basis, how much money is tied up in this project. I know we've actually wrote checks for a million and a check for 900,000, but we only wrote that check for 900,000 at the end of May. So we can't really say that 1.9, which is the sum of those, 
is our total amount to compute interest on because the 900,000 was only tied up in this project for part of the year. So this process for average accumulated expenditure is the way that we take these actual amounts paid and kind of put them on an annualized basis for calculating interest. So let's look real quick at how we would do that. So I have this amount that was paid on January 1st was a million. And I have the amount that was paid May the 31st for 900,000. Okay, so um, the way we calculate the average accumulated expenditure is we say simply say, how many months was the amount paid tied up in the project? So if we make the payment on January 1st, then clearly that was tied up for 12 months. And then how many total months are there in this period? There's 12, because the project didn't end until the next year. So in 2022, this whole 12 months construction was go ongoing. So we had 12 out of 12. Okay, so for our, on an annualized basis, that million dollars was tied up the whole time. Nobody's going to argue that. Now the 900,000, we made that payment on May 31st. Well, when we make that payment on May 31st, that means for the rest of the year, the 900,000 was tied up in this project. We couldn't use that 900,000 cash anywhere else because we've already paid it on this construction project. So if we think about that in terms of how many months it was tied up, it was tied up for seven, right? It was tied up for June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. So that's seven months. So for seven of the 12 months, the 900,000 was tied up. But an annualized basis, that's like saying 525,000 for a whole year. So when we add those two pieces together, we get the average accumulated expenditure of 1,525,000. Okay, so that is the amount on an annualized basis that we want to use to calculate the interest. Look, that came from my um, Zoom screen. The interest that we are going to um, end up capitalizing. So let's jump back over here. 1,525,000, that is the answer. We just calculated it. Now when I write it, it's gonna put it on the screen and it'll still be there in a minute. Uh, that's the beauty. Okay, so that's my average accumulated expenditure. It's not the same as the actual expenditures, which was 1,900,000. Right, there's the actual expenditures. It's not the same as that, it's uh, an annualized. So it's gonna be less than that when my um, payment happened at the end of May. All right, and so the um, next item, if, they, if Almo chooses to use only the specific construction loan to capitalize interest, then how much interest can we capitalize? All right, this question is getting to the point that GAAP lets you, management have some choices. Management can use the rate associated with the specific loan, as long as this average accumulated expenditure is not bigger than the actual principal, which it's not in this case. Or GAP says you can combine all your debt and come up with a weighted average rate. So here I'm saying, what if we just use the specific construction loan interest rate? How much interest can be capitalized? All right, you're gonna probably do this faster than it takes me to switch screens and show you on my Excel sheet but it's pretty straightforward. This is just taking our average accumulated expenditure amount and multiplying it by the interest rate. Okay, so here I had an average accumulated expenditures of 1,525, and we had an interest rate on that construction loan of 5%. So I'm just gonna combine those two. And that's gonna give me 76,250. Okay, which I am going to write in here before I forget it. And then I'll write out again how I got it. Okay, that, whoops. That's just equal to the one five two five times 5% perfect. Okay, that's the how much interest we can capitalize. So that's the piece of the 245 that instead of being interest expense, this 76,000 
250 is going to go into the general ledger as part of the construction project. So question number four then just ask us, what is the total amount capitalized? This is a T account question. Okay, this is asking you, this is asking you how much goes in the T account for this construction project at the end of 2022. Well, we can look and see, we actually paid a million, so that's gonna be there. We actually paid 900,000, so that's gonna be there. And then this 76,000, this is actually an adjusting entry amount. Oh, I put in a, a parenthesis where I didn't have a parenthesis, okay? So we're gonna add the 76,250 in the T account to the 1 million and the 900,000. So that's going to give us a total here of one million nine, whoops, nine, seven, six, two, fifty. Line it up so it's lined up with everything else. Okay, so that's the total amount. Total amount here, total amount capitalized is 1,976,250, okay? So we had to come up with an average accumulated expenditure. We use the average accumulated expenditure to calculate the amount of interest to capitalize. And then we're basically, we use an adjusting entry to take that 76,250 out of interest expense and put it into the T account with the asset. That's how that works. All right, the next part of this says uh, GAP al allows Almo to instead combine all the debt and come up with one weighted average interest rate. So I'm just asking you here to make sure you would understand how would you come up with that average rate? What would your rate be? Now you see we have a rate of 5% and we have a rate of 3%. What I want you to quickly understand is a weighted average rate would not just say 5 plus 3 divided by 2 is it? four, you know, eight divided by four, two. So let's look at how we would calculate that rate. Okay, what we're gonna do to calculate an average weighted rate is we're gonna look at the total interest and the total debt. And we're simply gonna say, okay, let's take the total amount of interest and divide that by the total amount of debt. And that's gonna give me an, a weighted average interest rate. So here it would be, I would say 3.77, I would round that to 3.77. That would be a weighted average rate, okay? Now, I we don't go through with this problem. Okay, well, if you use that rate, how much capitalized interest you would get well, it would be really simple. You would take 3.77 times the 1,525, and you wouldn't get 76,250. You'd get a number smaller than that because you're using a smaller interest rate. But GAP lets managers choose which of the two. They can't do both of them, obviously, but which of the two they're going to do. All right. And then finally, this is just an FYI. Since the job doesn't end until mid-2023, Alamo again gets to capitalize some interest. The amount capitalized is going to be limited to the time when construction was actually happening or half the year. So this is just FYI. So I just want to finish FYI and show you. Uh, what we would do with that next. OK, so again, this isn't something that I'm going to have you do for me. Um, I'm just showing you this to show you how it would work. All right, so in our problem, we had a payment that happened in, in June 30th, at the very end of the job. But this 1,976, that came from the very first part uh, from January 1st. And um, well, here's what I'm just gonna say. The beginning balance. But in year two, 
uh, let's call this year two, this 1,976,250 is our beginning balance. That's what was in the T account. Okay, so that's what's going to go forward. I'm going to make these guys. You guys have probably already figured out that I like to talk to myself. Okay. So when we look um, in year two, we have the project ended in June. So um, our total months we're going to use, again, this is just an FYI piece, just to finish it out for those of you that are curious, would be six instead of 12 because we finished the job in six months. This beginning balance was there for the whole six months. The amount we paid on June 30th was not there for any of it except the very last day. So look what happens if I take these same formulas for average accumulated expenditures in year two. So I'm just copying my Excel stuff down. What's going to happen is uh, the payment on the last day doesn't count in there at all. We can't capitalize interest if we didn't really have any money tied up when construction was happening. Remember, that was one of the conditions. Construction actually ha had to be happening. So we have 1,976,250. That would be my average accumulated expenditure when the project, at the end of the project, I need to cap a uh, capitalized interest calculation. I'm going to do this the same way I did it um, before, but with one, whoops, with one caveat, and that is, oh my word, why is this doing this to me? Because I'm talking and doing Excel at the same time. Um, use the same rate, but since the project only went through half of the year, I have to cut that 5% rate in half because that's an annual rate and we only had the project ongoing for half the year. So 49,406, that would be my capitalized interest. And if then if I was thinking, okay, well for this whole job, what was my um, initial value for my project it would be right here. The 2025656. So just want to show you how that works. Oh, that is not right either. Gosh, here I'm sitting here. It would not be 20256. It's summer, sorry. It would be, good thing this is just FYI. It would be my actual total expenditures plus my capitalized interest. Yeah, I forgot the 200,000. I mean, it's gonna factor in there somewhere. So it would come in there. There's my total value. All right, that's that. A very simplified version of construction um, capitalized interest calculations. So there you go.